Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the DC Collectibles animated Batman figure. Uh, now, you guys probably know that I don't really collect DC Collectibles, but I had to get this. You guys know I'm a big Batman fan. I loved the animated series, the first one in particular, but the, the new adventures were still pretty good, so I'm okay with that. And that's what this is based on. We don't have the gold emblem on the chest and we have the more angular design but that's okay I can live with it and this is in a six inch scale pretty much it's pretty close so let's take a look at that he stands uh, about six and a quarter to the top of his ears about s almost six inches exactly to the top of his head and just so you have a little bit of an idea comparing to a standard DCUC Batman figure DCUCs are a little tall for six inch scale but you can see it's not that much of a difference. This Batman's about six and a half inches tall, so they're close enough for sure to be in the same display. And I'll post some pictures at the end of the video so you can get an idea of what he's gonna look like on a shelf, but for now let's just do a quick comparison. That's what he is next to the Catwoman from the same line of figures. He comes with a whole bunch of stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. First, I want to go over the figure itself. This is not the cape it comes with or comes with on him. This is the one. It doesn't go over the shoulders. This one is an accessory technically, but uh, actually, you know what? I should probably pop that off so that I can show you the articulation anyway. So we're going to just leave the cape off for now. I'm going to put the head on just because I feel like it. Okay, so this is the figure. Sculpt-wise, it's pretty good. It looks like it's supposed to from the show. I don't know how I feel about the pectoral sculpt. Uh, as you can see here, it, he comes with this little base thing, which, I, like I said, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we'll just leave that in. There's no uh, there's no line there for the pecs. So it's, it throws it off just a little bit, but obviously it's not a big deal. The bat is sculpted, so that's pretty good. The belt is sculpted. It looks pretty much accurate to the show. Not perfect, but pretty close. And then he has just about the right silhouette from the show. Really no complaints as far as that goes. Like I said, I wasn't as big a fan of this version as I was the first version, but still, this is fine and it's fairly accurate. Uh, a couple things that do bug me though, well, we'll get to the articulation in a second. Uh, as far as the paints go, the paints are pretty good. He's almost solid gray. There's no shading, uh, so he's gray and black. And then the, here's the problem with the black parts, unfortunately. You can see some skin tone coming through. So that's a little weird. Hopefully you can tell on camera. Apparently they molded him all in this colored plastic. And the paint job isn't that great. It's a little fuzzy around the edges. They didn't get the nose, which I guess is okay technically, but since it's not sculpted it should be black. The eyes are painted well enough, but it just feels kind of lazy. It's not a great paint job for being such a simple paint job. I would have preferred it to be a little bit better. Uh, his isn't that bad though. It's not any big deal. They didn't sculpt the trunks. That's a little bit irritating to me. And then uh, on all of the prototypes, they had the pegs filled in. And on this, they don't. And it's kind of an eyesore. It doesn't look that good. It doesn't look that good at all. So that's a little bit disappointing. Um, other than that, it's not, not so bad. Uh, the sculpt for the gloves is fairly accurate to the show, so no complaints there. Uh, he does have kind of this weird elbow design, but that's okay, because as soon as you start to pose him, it goes away, and it looks, well, it doesn't go away completely, but it looks a lot better. So that's all right. So let's talk about the articulation. Now, the head, as you saw, it is removable, so you can swap out the capes. It has a single ball peg. This is definitely a, f a missed opportunity for a double ball peg, obviously. It would have been nice to have another ball peg in the top of the head, it's not a huge deal, it's just something to note. And then another thing to note, which also isn't a huge deal, but it's something that popped into my head. They could have made it so that it worked without the cape at all, because there was a few times in the show where his cape was not on, and he still looked pretty cool with, without the cape. But that's definitely not an option here. So no big deal, it's just something I noticed. So anyway, the head articulation is still pretty good for just being a single ball peg. Looks around pretty well. It can look up and down, no problem. Of course, the cape will hinder it a bit, but you'll see that once I put the cape back on. Shoulders are a ball hinge without a swivel on this end, so it just it pegs into the chest and it'll swivel there. That's what this is here. And we have the hinge. That's it, though. That's the problem is they sculpted the shoulders like this when I don't think they really needed to. This cape has the shoulder part sculpted in, and this cape is meant to be loose at the shoulder so that you can pose him. 
but you can't really pose him so that's pretty pretty much a bummer for me having the shoulders that limited it, it kind of sucks the figure's still good but I was just hoping for a little bit more for the bicep we have no rotation for the actual bicep but we have it down here in the elbow which we've seen a bunch of times in various styles of figures so I can live with that and then the elbow doesn't give us quite 90 degrees which is a little bit disappointing again because I mean it's not like there's some kind of incredible sculpt work going on here it's basically just a cartoon they they could have worked that out a little bit better I think it feels a bit lazy to me which it's disappointing but it the DC collectibles figures aren't known for their articulation which is why I don't normally collect them so I mean I wasn't expecting it to be great but I was expecting something this simple to be a little bit better and the glove is sculpted onto the arm, so this part's not going to rotate. We will get a rotation down here at the wrist because all of the wrists are interchangeable. All of the hands are, so those just peg in so they rotate, and they all have a hinge. So we're not going to have to worry about the articulation when we look at the accessories. So there's that. Um, I will mention one more thing about these particular hands when we get to the accessory section. He does have a waist twist, so that's pretty nice. The belt is a softer material, so that's also very good because it allows you to pose the legs a little bit better. So that's, I appreciate that. So the legs can come just about all the way forward, so that's okay. They go back pretty good ways also, so that's pretty good. Going out to the side, very simple, or very, very simple, very similar to the DC Universe Classics figures. It's a little bit of an ugly design for my liking, but it's functional, so I'll take it. Uh, it just kind of ruins the sculpt, but it's not bad. Once you get imposed, you kind of ignore that. Now, it would have been really, 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 really useful for him to have a thigh swivel. I don't know why they didn't give him a thigh swivel. That drives me nuts. We got a shin swivel, which isn't a realistic point of articulation for a human being. A thigh swivel is, and a thigh swivel is much more practical on a figure for posing, but we didn't get that, so that's really disappointing for me. The knee doesn't give us 90 degrees either. So just like the elbow, it really should have had better articulation. And that wouldn't have cost him anything. All they had to do was trim this plastic, or you know, not, not trim it since they're sculpting it you know, originally, but somebody who wanted to increase that articulation, you can see if you didn't have that curvature right there, if it was just kind of flat, you could bring the knee all the way up. And it wouldn't even hurt the look of the figure other than a little bit back here. So that's something that could have been accounted for much better than it was, I think. And then for the ankles, we have a nice ankle hinge, and we have an ankle rocker. Unfortunately, it's the, Mar the new Marvel Legends kind, which we started seeing, I think, back during the Soda Revolutions figures, where the peg for the ankle hinge, instead of going straight down, it comes out this way, which gives us our ankle rocker. Now, that's okay, it's better than nothing, but it does give us that weird angled ankle rocker. I'll show you why it's not as good as something that's designed like this. Now, this isn't the best looking design, but you can see for functionality's sake, it's a perfectly square ankle rocker. It doesn't throw that foot off into a crazy angle every time you use it. So we'll talk about Catwoman when we review her. but. Just so you get the idea, this is going to make posing a little bit tricky just because it puts the foot off at an angle rather than square. It's not bad though, I'm very happy we got at least some sort of ankle rocker because I wasn't expecting it on this tiny little foot. So that's okay. Alright, let's look at the capes really quick so I can put one of them on and leave it on. This is the one that he comes with in the packaging, it comes with on. In the packaging you can see it's drooped over the shoulder more so you can still pose him but like I said the posing still very limited all you're gonna get is that forward motion for the most part but that's okay so that's good since we're not talking about articulation I'm gonna leave this one on because it looks better I like the over the shoulder look much better and that's what he had most of the time in the show so we're going to do that, and then we're going to put the head on, and then I'll show you the neck articulation. It's still pretty much intact with the cape on, so really no complaints there. You can push it down a little bit farther, and that limits it more, and it looks fine. But if you leave it at that one extra notch up like that, I'm assuming they made that notch just for posing purposes. Very handy, and it doesn't look like the head's sitting too high other than the gap in the back. So you can do that either way, and it'll work just fine. It still poses pretty well like that. The capes both are soft. 
Fortunately, no shading. It would have been really cool if we got an effect like that on the cape. That would have been really nice. I can definitely see some customizing potential on these guys. Haven't been commissioned yet, but who knows, that might happen. Okay, so we have the two different capes. Then we have a slew of hands, the first of which are the fist hands. Now this just drives me nuts when companies do this, and I don't know why they do it. Maybe it did that in the show, but that's not a fist. That looks like he's going to hold a baseball bat or something. Nobody punches with their hand at a weird angle like this. A fist is like that. So that just bothers me. Obviously it's not a huge deal. I can live with it. Just something to point out. So we have the fists. Then we have two gripping hands. For either, or one gripping hand for either side. Actually that's not the same two. Here we go. Let's do it this way. So we have two gripping hands for either side, like I said originally, on accident. The more loose grip, and then the tighter grip. So you can do that, pose them however you want to with those. Then we have the two batarang hands, one for either side. And of course if you have a batarang hand, you need a batarang, which has a 1 on it, or an L I suppose. That's a little irritating, but I guess it's okay. Here's the thing, another thing that's a little bit irritating, this figure is so close to being perfect and then it's off. It holds it okay, but there's really no place for it to go, so you're just kind of wedging it in there between the thumb and the finger. It works okay on this hand, you can put it either way, so that's good. But on the other hand, where'd it go? It doesn't really wedge in too well. It wants to fall out more. So you just have to be really careful and really just push that in there and try to not break it. So, I mean, like I said, it's not a big deal at all, but it's something to be aware of something I think they could have accounted for a little bit better. If you want to use the loose grip hands to hold the batarangs, you can do that. Just make sure you don't break your batarang because it is a very small piece of plastic. Then we have a hand that has the grapnel hook. Grapnel... what is that thing called? Grapnel something. It's really late at night again guys, so I apologize. Uh, that's sculpted in there, so that's staying there. A little strange is that this piece comes out. It doesn't give you a rope or any way to connect it, but that does come out, so I guess you could do that on your own. And additionally, we get another one. Again, I'm not really sure why, since that's the only hand that can hold it, and it's sculpted in, so there's really no point. And this one comes apart too, so I'm not sure what's the deal, but you do get that. So it's pretty cool. I really appreciate that they gave us the alternate capes and the alternate hands, and all for 22 bucks. I mean, we're getting a heck of a figure for 22 bucks. It's just those things I pointed out are things that I think could have been easily fixed or accounted for in the beginning, so that's why I have to say I wish they were there. He does come with that stand I was showing you, a little uh, turnaround of Batman on there, which is nice. Little Tamashii Nation style stand, clear upright. It's not really going to hold the figure all that well, but it'll probably do a good enough job, and it'll definitely keep him from taking a shelf dive. So there it is, guys. I know that ended up being a really long review, but I thought it warranted it since this is a very unique style figure. So stay, stick around, and I'll show you some photos. And uh, I think you guys should probably pick this up if you're a Batman fan. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it's still pretty darn good, and it's definitely a good iteration of a cartoon into an action figure. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more figure reviews, custom figures, and other fun stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.